We are so much thankful again. We are having those uh, light up, light out. So everything will come to we are back again. And also, I thank you for patiently waiting. And I believe that as a country, there's more room for improvement. So keep the faith and let's believe God to overcome this in Jesus' name. Amen. And I was starting now, I want us to pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. We bless your name, oh God, for the opportunity to hear your word. Let your word, oh God, have free cause in us. And lead us, oh God, to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight, I'm sharing with you kingdom principles of faith. Kingdom principles of faith. The Bible says that in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Don't forget that he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The problem about a lot of people is that they don't believe that God exists. Not everyone believes that God exists. To some people, God doesn't exist. And the Bible says in the book of Psalms, it's only the foolish that say that there's no God. So there are people who have agreed that there's no God. And they want everybody to make it that God doesn't exist. And it is very, very untrue. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen a product without a manufacturer before? No. Every product has a manufacturer. And it is the manufacturer that determines the product. The same applies to us. God exists and must believe He exists. That is one aspect of faith. You see, when you believe that God exists, you make everything become great in your life. Everything becomes great in your life. Because the true way to have encounter with God is faith. The true way. And one thing I want you to understand is that when it comes to faith, it's different from many see. Although there are a lot of insight concerning faith, but the actual essence of faith is what we need to know. Faith. That's why I said the kingdom principles of faith. Because the moment you understand it from the God's perspective, things change in your life. Because you can only be acceptable in the sight of God not with your tears. You can not with your tears. You can only attract God based on your faith. Because the Bible said that without faith, it is impossible to please Him. So you can be in the presence of God and never please God. You see, you may have a lot of workers, but not every worker you may ha have pleasure in. But as some workers, you always admire and you always don't want to lose them. Why? Because of something that they do that makes you like them. So the same thing, it comes to faith. 
The same thing is true about faith. So faith gives you the platform to please God. That is the mindset of God. It gives you the platform to please God. So if you don't have faith, there's no way you can please God. With that, so faith has become the foundation of our life in the kingdom of God. Whenever you talk about the kingdom of God, you cannot talk it without faith. You can't. Because it is what you, you, you rely on in the kingdom of God that is what connects you to the king. I don't know whether you're understanding what I mean. So, we must understand the accents of the faith of the kingdom. Because when we're able to do that, we can attract God in the highest dimension. Faith. We must be able to attract God at all costs in our lives. That is why God says that for without faith, but without faith, it is important. So for you to understand the concept of why God is saying that without faith, it is important to please God. Now let's look to what God said in the scenario, the same Hebrews chapter 11, but this time let's go upward. That's right. It says that by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God has translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Listen and listen carefully. And I was translated. And before he was translated, the Bible says that he never found death. Why? Because it pleased God. How does it please God? Faith. What is faith? Believing what God says. That is faith. It's nothing, nothing, nothing extraordinary. No. The moment you believe what God says, faith is activated. Faith is at work. So one of the things is that you must understand that the, the, the moment you start believing what God says, your faith, you have, you have her faith. That is why it is not always to see God before you believe that he exists. When Ghana was under colonialism, you see, there's one thing that we know is that we never seen the Queen of England. Do we? No. Once a while, then he comes and see that our people will parade, both children and adults, who parade on the roadside so that they will sing for her and they will accept her and they say that long live the queen, long live the queen because she owns us, she owns us, our allegiance is to her, our everything is to her, although she's not in Ghana, but the moment she, wherever she is, Ghana is the replica of a country. You don't always have to see God before you believe that He exists. The fact that you are alive is a sign, it's a sign or scenario that God exists. You don't have to see miraculous gymnastic moves from anybody before you believe that God exists. He exists whether you will like it or not, it still exists. Now what? He exists before the world and he will exist after the world. He exists before you were born, he exists before I was born, and he will exist after you are gone, he will exist after I was gone. So our existence does not express the existence of God. It exists. And we need to 
get this thing into our subconscious mind that with or without our, our belief, God still exists. Nothing of us changes his existence. So, if you don't believe that God exists, how do you expect to operate in faith? Because faith connects to God. You can't believe, if I believe in what you say, it's not faith. Confidence. Trust. You. The moment I believe in something you say, I'm not having faith in you. I'm having confidence. Confidence can be found in faith, but faith can never be found in confidence. Take this and take this. Because sometimes, we think that our faith in me, no, our faith in God, not man. When I say that it is more to have uh, to trust in God than to have confidence in man. So trust is your absolute being to be, rely on what a person does or do, says or do. That is trust. Putting your absolute being on what somebody says or do. That is trust. And I cannot trust any human being in a sense. I trust you, of course. If I don't trust you, I will not come your way. If you don't trust me, you will not even view and spend your time to listen and to hear me. So we trust in ourselves. So anybody who has said, it is only in religion that we have been taught how not to trust anybody. But in the kingdom of God, we trust everybody. Because we are all created in the image and the likeness of God. So we all have the equal foundation to trust everyone in the kingdom of God. That is what we must think of. Because in the kingdom of God, there is no evil mindset. No delusion, no deceptions. Everybody has the mind of the king. For we have the mind of Christ. Every kingdom citizen has the mind of God. So there's no evil man, there's no evil thinking. There's no ill thinking. We all think like God. So if you understand this principle and you attach faith to it, you are complete in the excess. You have nobody to fear. You have nothing to worry about because you understand that the faith is the foundation of the kingdom life. You must have faith in God. Because with that deed, you can never attract, you can never please God. There are so many people who are trying to please God in their own way, which is not in alignment to God's principle. And God can never be, it can never be acceptable in the sight of God. If you want to please God, you, know how, you have to do what He says, what He requires, not what you think, not what you think. The problem is that many people want to do things in their own way in order to please God. It doesn't work that way. That is why it is very difficult for Christianity to extend to certain categories or certain fears of life because we are too much of, let me do this so that God will be pleased. No, you don't do things to God, but you do things according to His will. That's what the Bible says that we, uh, when it acts according to His will. So, you see that faith is working according to God's will, according to God's pattern, according to God's way. That is how faith will always lead you to God's way of life, lead to God's kingdom, the kingdom life. It will always make you live the kingdom life. It will not only make you live a life that contradicts the kingdom of God. There are so many people who are living a life that they are living it because they know it makes them good. No, the kingdom of God doesn't exist for you to be good. The kingdom of God exists for you to be right. And that's why I said that seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It never said that seek ye first the kingdom of God and the good things. No. And all that things shall be added unto you. So we are not in the religion will tell you everything you do is good. Somebody gives money out is good. But in the kingdom of God, you are checked by your standard with the king. That is how God sees you. So, if you cannot please God, you can't please anybody in the kingdom. So, the first person you must please is that you must please the king. Because when you are able to please the king, you can able to please anybody. 
When you're able to please the king, you can be able to please anybody. But if you don't please the king, you can't please anybody. And I want you to understand this. Many people are living in deception because they think that, oh, because everybody likes me. That's nothing. The kingdom of God, we have nobody pleasing people. If you have somebody to please, you are pleasing the king. In religion, we set in to please others. Oh, I heard, if I said this, I know this is right, but if I say it, I may lose followers. Number two, I may lose offering. Number three, I may lose popularity. So I'm saying something to make the people stand look good. To make also to, to make my to protect my reputation. No, you don't do that in the kingdom of God. You do things so that the king will only be pleased. So it doesn't matter how many people are rich. I don't do things for people, I do things to please the king. Because I'm going to stand before him, not people. He is going to judge me, not people. So if there's anybody to be pleased or to please, is the king, Jesus, is the king God. That is why I said that my allegiance is to the king and Christ is our king. God has given to us to be our king. And I cannot change that fact. I can't change it. You can't change it. No democratic government can change it. No, no other belief can change that. What he has said is what will stand. And I, so I stand with what he says. And that is final. I may please you, I may not please you. You, are, you, may not, you may like it, you may not like it. That is up to you. But when it comes to the kingdom of God, let me tell you something. There's one audience and that audience is God. Get this thing and get it well. Because when you try to please people, you end up becoming a subject against the king. Because people will always force you to live against the kingdom. That is what a lot of people are saying, doing now. They are, they are, they are forcing many, 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 many men of God to do things that is out of God's, God's will. They are making you to marry gays together. They are making you to marry, marry people that you are not supposed to marry. Male and male, you are married together as a pastor. Where do you belong? Whom are you pleasing? You see, you must bring this, there must be distinctive difference in the things, in your decision you make. Your decision must be aligned to the kingdom of God. Because where the king is, let me tell you something, his principle must be enforced. The Bible said that, who can destroy the works of a king? Impossible. Impossible. So let us understand this because it seems that the world is going with what? Because we are pleasing men than pleasing God. You are rather pleasing men than pleasing God. Because the fact that when I say what the king says, it's going to make the people uncomfortable. And the fact that they become uncomfortable, I lose access. Let me tell you something. Your access can only be found in your alignment to pleasing the king by faith. Take all the people who pleases God. Look at the man Moses. Moses was a person that God made that is meek among all the people that God has chosen. Moses is the meekest person of all. Whatever God says, he does. But at the, crit at the critical moment, when God wants to elevate himself for the people to see his glory, Moses began to praise the people. So what he did the opposite of what God instructed him. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter how long you have lived with God. It doesn't matter how long you are in the, in the ministry. If you go against the word of the king, let me tell you something. You, it will uh, forever abound you. Uh, it will leave you alone. It will leave you where, uh, outside his principle. Your consistency in pleasing him determines how far you are used to attract him. And we must understand this. Because the moment this thing is being endured in, in into us, we have a stance with God. So sometimes many people wonder why we pray God is not happy. Because you cannot violate His word to please people and instead expect Him to back your words. No. God elevates those who elevate Him. God honors those who honor Him. God obeys those who obey Him. Why? Because the moment you obey God, you have obeyed His word. And God and His word are one. You can't take God out of his word and you can't take his word out of him. 
His word and him are one. Don't ask the Bible said that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Listen and listen carefully. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So you can't tear them up. You can't apart it. They're always in clan. They are joined. They are forced together. They are fought together. They are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are joined together. Stop pleasing men. Stop pleasing. Because one of the things is that be, trying to please men, you fail to please God. Trying to please men, you always fail to please God. Paul prayed a prayer. He said that, that I may, um, if I please men, I cannot serve God. Because you can't serve God and please men. The reason why many people faith are not working because they are using need for pleasing of men, for men pleasers. Faith that pleases men is not faith that God wants. Faith that pleases God is the faith that God is inclined to. If you want God to incline to you, you must have faith in Him. Faith, not only faith, but your faith must be in alignment to His word, His principles. Faith. Faith. God expects you to have faith in Him. Confidence in Him. That is why you must please God. He exists. Let me tell you something. Rewarders or rewards come to people you believe they exist. You believe in their potential. For example, if I don't believe that you are where you are today, there's no way I will even spend my time to get to you. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. But because I believe you exist, that's why I come your way. I'll be sent in on your way. So you must also believe in God. You must have confidence in God. You must trust in God. You see, one of the things you must, uh, uh, you must, you must desire most is that praising God. It's, it's diligent. God is a diligent God. It's not a biased God. Diligently seek Him. To diligently seek somebody is to believe in the person. That he has something you don't have. He has reached a height you have not yet reached. He knows things you don't know. He is the sustainability of your life. He is your progenitor. The source of your life. So the moment you start seeking him, you are putting all your totality on him because he can sustain you. It's a reward of them that did not just seeking God anyhow. You see, you come to church and say, I'm seeking God. Yeah. You see, you are you are obeying him, yes, it's part of the seeking him. But to seek God goes beyond just going to church. Goes beyond just reading his word. Doing what his word says. It says one of his word to us. One of his words to us. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel of the kingdom to every creature. Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. And the moment you start preaching the gospel to every creature, you are obeying his word. Let me tell you something. The word preach is means to demonstrate. You are demonstrating God's kingdom to every... So every sphere of life, you must demonstrate. Demonstrating God to every politician. Demonstrating God to every musician. Demonstrating every, every, uh, the, the kingdom of God to everybody, including everybody. Wherever you see any human being, the kingdom of God must be demonstrated. And when you are able to demonstrate the kingdom of God to people... Let me tell you something. You bring God into your situation. You bring God, you make them uh, realize God, and that is called faith. To make God known to people is faith. 
That is how it is. So number one, faith is believing what God says. Number two, making people to recognize God. So faith is not the opposite of what we normally think because look at this thing very carefully. When Moses fell for God to be seen in the midst of their crisis, let me tell you something. God seated himself on Moses. So the thing that God has said about Moses to be fulfilled, God changed it because it did not do the other side of what God requires. So he failed. The two phases of faith. Number one, believing in what God says, that is why he acted. Number two, now making God to be glorified in the sense of the essence of the people is the other aspect of faith. Many of us, we believe what God says. We believe in what God says. But now, let the people also believe in the God that instructed us, that commands us. That makes the difference. So, whenever God speaks, He speaks for you to obey, and He is speaking for others also, to make others also to believe in Him. So, whatever you say, that doesn't make people to believe in Him. You fail in faith. Your faith is not working. Your faith can never work in that. Hallelujah. So, we must make God to be known. We must make God to be seen. We must make God to be heard. That is what faith is required. So, whenever... Oh, thank God for my Papa. God richly bless you and increase your days with a more anointing. Forgive bringing me out. I'm so thankful to Reverend Bernard Ade Aqua. To you, I own every moment of my ministry too. You are a great teacher who have taught me and teaching me from a distance. God richly bless you. So, one thing is that our faith is very, very important when it comes to pleasing God. Because it's the, it's the foundation. Let me give you one principle. Today, I'm talking about a series. I'm starting the whole thing anew. Let me talk on, I'm talking to you one. And let me give you one principle of faith, of kingdom faith. Number one, faith is the foundation of your life in the, in the, in the kingdom of God. Faith is the foundation of your life in the kingdom of God. You can never be a citizen of the kingdom without faith. Oh, impossible. For we live by faith. The just shall live by faith. He's talking about the citizens. So the citizen of the kingdom of God will live, will live by faith. So without faith, you can't be a kingdom citizen. Without faith, you cannot be saved. You can, without faith, you cannot be born again. So faith is your life, is the foundation of your life in the kingdom of God. Other things matters. Wisdom matters. Knowledge matters. Understanding matters. But faith, remember, the Bible says that wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, God's wisdom. And we thought I get in, get understanding. So, it really presupposes, uh, this, this presupposes that wisdom is the foundation to which things are established on by, from our minds. Whatever your mind will produce, it must be relied and lit upon wisdom. But when it comes to your very being of your life, the complacency of your life, faith is the foundation. Wisdom becomes the foundation of the brainchild of you. How to position things in this rightful environment. That is called wisdom. How to divide things equally without causing distraction by making everybody equally minded is wisdom, foundation of wisdom. That is called wisdom. It's the foundation of implementation. But when it comes to life, the foundation of life is faith. 
Because God is life. And for you to get attracted to God life, faith is required. People of God, this is a time. This is the moment that our faith must be revived. I must fear our faith must come to and uh, uh, come to the point that we will know whom to please. Because the Bible says that if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? The foundation be destroyed. What can the kingdom citizen do? So our 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 foundational life, foundational life is faith. That is it. And what is faith? Believing what God says. Doing things that will make God glorified in the sight of people. Faith. So anytime you activate your faith, you are adding value to your life. Expanding the glory, extending its influence to other people. Anytime you and first faith, God is glorified, is pleased. Any act of faith, God is pleased. Anything you do out of faith, God is pleased, not man. So don't be surprised when man begins to criticize you. You give an offering, they criticize. The man of God, you are not giving to a man of God. Let me tell some the role of a man of God. When you enter into a bank, who do you see? The owner of the bank? No, you don't see the owner of the bank. Who takes the money from you? Tell her, an, another employer. Do you question him whether he will put the money into the account or not? No. You believe that as long as he has taken the money or she has taken the money from you, that fellow is going to deposit it into your account. You believe it. You don't doubt it. When you give an amount of money to a man of God, you are not giving to the man. The man of God is recording it for you and it is going straight to God. So why? Do you allow people to radical your faith? Tell you what you must use your faith for and know where you should use your faith for? No, you don't please man. You are pleasing God. Don't be man pleaser. Be God pleaser. Because the moment you try to please man, let me tell you something, you shape the foundation of your faith, of your life in the kingdom of God. You shake it off. So one thing we must always do is to always depend on God. Absolutely. Absolutely depend on God. Because that is what will make our life complete in Him. Beloved, this is a series. I'm so much thankful, so much grateful to God. And I know that definitely we'll, reach, we'll meet again next week Friday. And also I want to say a big thank you to all viewers. Likings, loving, whatever you have done. I'm so much thankful, not for me, but for God. You are, made, you are, you are, you are just expressing your gratitude for making it able to reach you what God has deposited into me by His Spirit. God bless you so much. I want you to share to anybody you can. Share to your friends. Let them be connected so that their faith will be revived. So that they will start doing the impossible things. And also, if you want to support this program, we buy data. It's, not, it's, not, it's nothing to call on to you. But to also be a blessing to the ministry, you must also learn. Let's learn together by giving out to 057-00-76739 or 055-14-66659. They are all mobile, they are all registered, and God will tr truly bless you. You see, somebody saw the challenges we are going through, and he gave, a, he donated a phone to be used. A temporary, temporary usage. Till we get our own. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. You can also do something. You can demo. You can also donate so that we can reach a lot of people. Also, 
If you don't have the app, I want you to download the app on Mixer, that is M I X L R. Then you search Reverend Manuel Amenon. Then you start listening to most of our messages are recorded there, so that you start learning more and going along with us. Also, if you are on Facebook Live, I want you to share to as many people as you can. Remember, you receive to give. You can't give what you have not received. The moment you receive something, it is required that you give to others. So learn to give to other people. Let other people also benefit from what you are sharing, what you are, you are listening, what you are learning. And God will be, make you great. One of the things that I also encourage you to do is that the kingdom of God has no end. So don't bring end to the kingdom of God in your life. Remember, kingdom life, Christ our King. Kingdom life, champion the kingdom life. God bless you. Bye. This is your friend, the pastor, your brother, and it's me, Reverend. Emmanuel, A. Armenio, God bless you. I salute you.